Hello, everyone, and welcome to, the, to today's webinar. Uh, we're going to get things started right now. Uh, we're at the top of the hour. Uh, so today we're going to chat about eight ways video can supercharge the bottom of your funnel. Uh, so looking at how video can be effective for you, uh, but really focusing at the bottom of the funnel, uh, not necessarily the top or the middle, although we will briefly touch on those um, just to kind of address the funnel holistically so you have a better understanding of, of really how and why video fits into the, the bottom of the funnel. So some quick background on myself. Uh, my name is Joe Galata, and I, I head up uh, revenue operations at Vidyard. Uh, so my role is responsible for a number of things, uh, really focused around sales, marketing, um, customer success, and things like that. Um, so video is obviously a huge component of that, uh, traditionally uh, more of a marketing thing. Uh, but today we're going to talk about really how it's spread across um, the entire customer life cycle and really zero in on the, the bottom of the funnel. So the things we'll, we'll cover today, um, number one, uh, why video is so important at the bottom of the funnel, uh, and then how to tailor uh, video through different stages of the funnel. So we'll look at the, we'll look at the entire thing and then um, kind of where different types of videos fit in, and then we'll really dig into uh, to the bottom of the funnel and look at eight different types of videos that you can use at that, that area. Uh, and then finally, we'll, we'll wrap up with how you evaluate the sex, success of that. So you know, it's one thing to go and put all this video in these different places and whatnot, um, but how do you tell if it's actually working? So we'll go through two, three different tactics to do that. So uh, to kick things off, let's start uh, with a really high level view of video today, uh, just to get a snapshot of kind of where things are and then talk a little bit about where they're going. So if you look at some of the, the big platforms out there today uh, on the internet, like Facebook, uh, they're seeing things like Facebook's seen over 4 billion videos viewed every day. So you know, just a phenomenal amount of video there. Um, and then the big one uh, would be YouTube, obviously. Uh, so they're pushing out 6 billion hours of video every month. So I always like to look at these numbers first in the context of the entire planet. And we've got 7 billion people. Um, you know, on Facebook, they're, they're serving up 4 billion a day. So, you know, over half of the, <laughs> the people on the planet are watching video. And, you know, on YouTube, almost an hour of video consumed per person on the planet per month. So it's just astonishing in numbers. But when you really start to filter down, how many people actually have access to the internet out of those 7 billion? Obviously a much smaller amount. So per capita, the amount of video that's being consumed is just phenomenal. Uh, and it's been growing wildly over the last couple of years. Uh, and to kind of build on that and look forward, uh, Cisco is present, predicting that by 2018, uh, about 80% of all internet traffic will be video-based. So it's pretty clear that the video really is the future of the internet. But I think when you look at video, um, it's often been misinterpreted as a top of funnel asset. Uh, so you know, marketing uses it as something that they, they throw on the, the homepage of their website. Uh, or some kind of fluffy thing that they use to get attention and then and drive people through campaigns, um, which is definitely true. Uh, you know, it can certainly be used at the top of the funnel, uh, but it's much, much more robust than that. And it's really being driven by how people are consuming it, not just how businesses are pushing it out, but really what, what buyers are looking for. So in a B2B context, uh, there's a study done that found that 72% of buyers uh, watch video throughout the entire purchase path. So it's not just, you know, a quick video at the top of the funnel and they're done with it. Um, they're actually using video as a research mechanism to, to learn more at the bottom of the funnel and actually make their decision. So of those people, nearly half are watching 30 minutes or more videos throughout the, the process. So again, it's not just a 30 second video at the, the top. It's it's actual media research that you're doing they're doing throughout the process. Uh, so consuming at least half an hour of video before they make their decision. And everyone's heard the stat that 90% of purchase decisions are now made online uh, before they ever talk to a real person. So it's pretty clear that you know you need to be providing your buyers with some type of, of mechanism to, to do that research. And they're obviously um, you know, very receptive to, to video and consuming it. Uh, so it just makes sense that, that marketers and, and salespeople and, and companies in general are using video as that mechanism to, to communicate with their prospects before they actually have that one-to-one -one phone call or whatever it might be. So we're going to talk a little bit about using video throughout the entire funnel. Um, so kind of break up the funnel and, and talk about the different mechanisms at, at each one. So starting at the top of the funnel, uh, when you're here and you're, you're a prospect at the top of the funnel, 
you're really uh, obviously in the early stages, um, so you're not necessarily focused on you know what's the best option. You're really trying to figure out what is the pain and what is the opportunity. Um, so you know you've obviously got some some initial level of pain that you're trying to to dig into. Um, so looking at that and trying to learn more about it, um, you know where does this pain come from? What causes it? And uh, you know what are the the general solutions for this kind of thing? Who else is coming up against it? Things like that. So um, as a, a marketer, uh, when you're, you're pushing out content at this final stage, um, you want to keep it very high level. You know, you're not going to do a product demo, uh, but you might talk about, you know, best practices within the, that area of, of focus. Um, so videos um, of webinars and, and things like that are really good. Uh, thought leadership webinars, um, getting into educational things, trying to teach people about, about the topic. Uh, and here you can even get into company overviews as well. So we don't talk about your product, but talk about, um, you know, why do you exist as a company? What is that greater problem that you're trying to solve? So moving into the middle of the funnel, uh, this is where people have a pretty good idea of what, what the problem is they're trying to solve and, and generally how to do it. Uh, and this is where you start to introduce your actual solution or your product. Uh, so at this stage, you can start to get into product videos and, and little deeper webinars. Um, something to, to help educate your, your prospect about exactly how do you solve that problem and what you offer. Um, culture videos are really good here because people are starting to think about what are the different options, different solutions, and, and you know, there's a, a popular saying that people don't buy products or don't buy from products, they buy from companies. So you know, why is that company doing what they do? Um, you know, what's the culture of that company and, and why are they so passionate about solving that particular problem? Uh, so helping to start build your brand in that way at this stage is really important. Um, and also things like event videos, so people may be attending events around this particular topic. Um, so you can start to, to publicize that outside of the events and, um, you know, live webinars and whatnot. So uh, a lot you can do at the middle of the funnel to start educating them about how to solve the problem. Then at the, the bottom, uh, it really becomes about making a decision. Um, so you want to start talking about specific benefits of, of what you offer. Um, why are you better than your competitor? Um, exactly how does this fit into to their current situation and, and to solve that problem? Because, uh, you know, it's a little bit less about that you solve the problem or not, because if they're still with you at the bottom of the funnel, they know you solve it. But it's really about who's best to do it and how you fit into their, their existing infrastructure and processes and whatnot. Uh, so product demos are really important here. Um, customer testimonials are huge. Uh, obviously, if you talk about how wonderful you are from start to finish, uh, you don't really carry much credibility because you never say anything else. Uh, but to have a customer come out on a video and start to talk about how they were successful with you, uh, that goes a really long way. Uh, and sales enablement videos, um, helping your, your sales team get in front of people and, and get those conversations going and, and help them you know, qualify and, and close those deals. So as you can see, as, as people move through the funnel, there's, there's many different ways um, that you can talk to them through video uh, and, and obviously different, different ways to do it are, are more applicable at different stages. So let's get into, into the good stuff. Uh, so we're gonna focus in on the, the bottom of the funnel and talk about eight different ways that you can use video uh, to supercharge um, people at the, the decision making in the lower levels of the funnel. So number one is webinars. Um, so today, uh, you know, you're on a webinar. Uh, the great thing about this webinar is that it's not just a live event. It can be used ongoing um, so people can come back to it and watch the recorded version. As somebody who watched the live version, you could even come back and reference the, the recording at a later date. So it's a great medium to, to get out a lot of information. And really the goal at, at the bottom of the funnel is to, to educate people, as we were saying, uh, so really get into, um, you know, the, the weeds as to how you solve the problem and what your features are and that sort of thing. Uh, so today's webinar is definitely not that. This is more of a, a top of funnel webinar, um, talking about, you know, the greater problem and the greater opportunity. Um, but a, a webinar at the bottom of the funnel, you really want to focus in on, on, on how you solve the problem and how you can fit that solution into their existing infrastructure. So next up is customer stories. And as I just mentioned, this is really about proving your value um, to prospects uh, by using the success of your existing customers and having them talk about it. Uh, so it's uh, it's a really great unbiased way uh, to promote the, the and prove that, that your product can actually do what, what you say it can do. Um, and, you know, I think this is obviously something that everyone is always doing. And 
it's really usually a focus on stats. So what are the numbers that prove that this works? You know, what was the, the ROI number and, and what was the cost and things like that? And that's definitely important because that's what people make a decision on. But video gives you another level of um, another level to, to really get in front of people and convince them. And that's the whole emotional piece of it. So you can still tell the, the number story, uh, but add in all that emotional to really grab their attention. Um, so, you, you know, it's um, just, you can think of any, probably any TV commercial you, you've seen, uh, there's some kind of emotional response there, whether it's laughter, whether it's crying, or whether it's just that you know, realization of, of a whole other um, realm of possibility that um, that you can push out there with your product. Uh, video is perfect for doing that because, it, you know, it's audio, it's video, it's, it's so many different senses can be touched with with this medium. Uh, so definitely a lot you can, you can take advantage of there. So we had one uh, one example. Um, we won't show the video today just for um, the quality purposes and, and bandwidth and whatnot, uh, but we'll send out the link uh, through the attachments in, in this webinar. And uh, it's called a tale of two marketers. And what we did here uh, with this particular video is we contrasted uh, two different marketers that were running video, um, one with a strategy and one without. Uh, so the person without the strategy just threw up their videos on YouTube, and the other one had a you know a video intelligence platform, and they were able to track things and improve their ROI, and and it was more of a long-term game for them, and obviously had much more success. Uh, and then at the end of this video, what we did is is say, you know, this just isn't some fictitious story. Uh, this is an actual person um, from from one of our customers. And then from there, you could go and download a full case study with all the numbers and whatnot. Uh, so it was really a great primer to to get people emotionally involved in this this cool little video and and, and show them what success looked like, and then give them this uh, PDF version of the success story after that that really spelled out the steps to get there, so they could, they could do it themselves. Uh, so that's a great example of of how you can use video as a as a, a way to, to prove to your prospects uh, through your, your existing customers that, that you can actually do what you say you're going to do. So another great bottom of funnel video tactic uh, is pr custom prospecting videos. Uh, and I got to admit, this is you know out of the eight, this is by far my favorite. Um, something not a lot of companies are doing today. Um, I think because a lot of them are just afraid of the investment, but the results are, are absolutely unbelievable. Uh, in terms of conversion rates and whatnot. So what a, a custom prospect video does is allow you to create a, a short and personalized video uh, for an individual prospect, or it may not be a prospect, but their company or something like that. And, and really the idea is to, to create that one-to-one -one dialogue through a medium that allows you to, to show them more than you could in just a, a voicemail or an email or something like that. Um, so, you know, the, the, the ways of doing this are endless. It really depends on, on how your, your company acts. All right, sorry about that. We had some technical difficulties, but I think I'm back on the line now. Um, so the uh, custom prospect video, uh, as I was saying, um, the, the reason a lot of people don't do this is because of the, the overhead involved in creating a unique video for every prospect. Uh, but there are ways around that. Uh, so what you can do is create templates where uh, the rep really only has to record a short piece of it. Maybe it's an introduction and then it gets into a more standardized message and then uh, maybe there's another piece at the end that's very customized. So there are ways to, to speed up that process and make it a little less resource intensive uh, so they can start to get these out to more and more people. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's still very customized either way you do it.
So we had a, another example here uh, of something that uh, that Vidyard does uh, in our prospecting activities, where um, we allow our reps to essentially record um, a live demo of the prospect's website, uh, so they start to analyze, you know, in a 30 seconds or less, how they're using videos today and where some quick wins are. Um, so you can imagine as a as a prospect, um, it's you know, you get tons and tons of emails every day about, you know, let's have a chat chat about, you know, how so-and-so can do something for you. Um, but if you can all, all of a sudden, in the same amount of time, show somebody exactly where the opportunities are uh, and how they're doing things today in, in a one-to-one -one way, uh, it's much, much more powerful. So the when we look at, you know, the conversion rate from leaving a voicemail or, or an email um, to these prospecting videos, um, it's just night and day. Um, people are... are much more willing to get back to you because uh, they understand the value up front. Um, or you could even look at it the flip way, the flip side. Um, if they qualify themselves out because they're not interested, at least they have a good understanding of why they're qualifying themselves out. Um, and then down the road, they can come back. But it's such a, a great way to, to get so much information, personalized information, customized information out to a prospect to help start that, that conversation. All right. So next up, we have product demos. So this is nothing new. Um, everyone's been doing product demos since, well, even before video. Uh, but really, the goal with video is to, uh, and the product demo is to quickly explain what your product does and how it, it operates to give your your prospect a better understanding. Um, so through video, there's a couple of great things you can do that you can't do in other mediums. Um, one is that um, you can start to to build a, a really deep library of um, individual features. So we always recommend um, breaking up your videos into small bite-sized um, benefit-oriented um, segments. So not just an hour-long webinar of here's our product end-to-end, -end, but maybe 20 videos of here's the 20 different features we offer. So as a prospect, you can go in and say, all right, I I'm only going to watch five minutes worth. Here's the three things I care about the most. I'm going to watch those. I'll come back to the other ones later if they matter down the road, but for now, that's that's really what I'm looking for is these three features. Uh, so it just makes it much more digestible. Um, and again, because it is video, it, you can get across a lot more information than than images, still images, or anything like that. Uh, the other thing is is tracking. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit more about this later. Uh, but being able to to look at which features your your customers are looking at versus which ones they're they're not watching can really give you a lot of insight into to where their their interests are. So one thing we caution people on with product demos is that when you're building that library of multiple features, uh, it's really good to, to keep track of which features uh, are in which video um, because down the road, um, you know, especially in like a, a software environment where things are constantly changing, um, you're going to want to know which videos you need to update. So if a certain feature changes and you make an enhancement there, you can go and you can update that two-minute video. You don't necessarily have to go back and, and update this whole hour-long demo. Um, you can start to, to update just pieces of it as they change. So it makes it much, much more efficient, um, not just from the prospect consumption side, but also from the marketer's side um, as they, they build out these demos. So another great one is pricing videos. Um, so this is probably something that not a lot of people do because you think, why would I build a price to, or a video to, to show my prices? I'll just put it on a website. Um, so if you've got a very simple pricing model, you know, it may be easy to put it on uh, just a, on a website as, as text, um, but in cases where your pricing model might be a little more complex, uh, videos are a great way to help explain how that model works. Um, you know, with, with text, you might run the risk of um, not explaining it properly, and then you lose people because they just they bail because they just don't have the time to, to really translate what you're trying to say. Uh, but with video, um, you've got a much broader medium to, to help explain how that model works. And it's really not about telling them what the final price is, because uh, that may vary per customer. Uh, it's really just about helping them understand how that pricing structure works, and then they'll likely be able to, to figure out you know, a rough estimate of the price, um, and then that will help them you know, qualify you in and out. Mm -hmm. they don't, don't know if they're in the, the right arena or not. Um, so again, just a really great way to, to communicate that complex message in a short period of time without overwhelming people. So number six is FAQ videos. So this is a really good way to, to help, you know, make your, your customer success or your, your technical support team um, make their lives a little bit easier. Because uh, I think, you know, if you start to analyze a lot of the questions that come into a company, you'll find that 
a lot of them are the same. Uh, you might have 80% of your questions are really the same 10 questions just repeated by all your different prospects and customers and whatnot. Uh, so to be able to, to break those up into to videos uh, and make them easy to access for, for prospects and customers, they can still start to answer those questions for themselves uh, in real time as opposed to having to wait for um, someone on, on the, your side, you know, your customer support or success manager um, to answer it for them. Uh, and then it also doesn't tie up the, the resources of those people so they can start to be more proactive and, and tackle bigger issues without having to deal with these uh, kind of day-to-day uh, recurring questions. Um, so the best way to, to tackle FAQ videos is break it up into about 10 topics or less and then uh, just present your video in um, you know a short Q&A style uh, so you can group questions around topics or you can just do one question per topic however you know whatever makes the most sense based on your content. Uh, but just you know, keep it short, um, answer the question, and then um, allow people to, to just focus in on the questions that they care the most about and that they have. So number seven, step-by-step -step tutorials. Uh, so this kind of follows the same format as, as what we've been talking about with FAQs and whatnot, is, is really um, breaking up your, your tutorials into different topics and then just make it really easy for your customers to, to, to walk through that. Uh, so, you know, again, it could be based on features like we talked about before, as in your demos uh, or certain use cases and whatnot. Uh, but you're really just building um, a step-by-step -step tutorial uh, with a screen screencast or, or whatever uh, with voiceover and those types of things to walk your customers through how to do um, whatever it is they need to do. So with these, uh, always make sure to, to script them beforehand understand you know what what areas of the product you want to you know capture um, be it um, a digital um, you know on screen product or, or if it's even a physical product uh, make sure you've got that script and, and you know exactly which what the steps are and how you want to explain them um, and then you can create that video and again make sure you keep track of um, what what is in each tutorial so again if changes occur in your product uh, you can always go back and update just the ones that you need to and not not this whole set of uh, this whole product walkthrough. It's just that individual feature that might need an update. So that's a really powerful way to, to help your customers use your product um, in, a, in a way that it's easy to understand. You can get just a ton of information across in a short period of time. And last but not least, customer check-ins. So this is kind of going you know, beyond the, the bottom of the funnel and now we're into to customer land. Um, Although if you, you are a SaaS company, uh, the uh, customer land is is your funnel as well. So, uh, you know, video is, is not something that just stops once the sale is done. Uh, you can use it to engage your customers. So there's probably a probably hundred different ways you can do that with video. Um, but one that we'll mention today is customer check-ins. So this comes in the form of, for example, a new product release or, some, or, or a feature release. Um, how can you communicate that out to your customers? in somewhat of a, a personalized way but without having to spend an enormous amount of time calling every single one of your customers uh, and video is a good way to do that so have uh, your customer success manager uh, record a quick video introducing uh, the new feature or the announcement or whatever it might be and then send that video out to them uh, so they're getting uh, you know it's more than just an email with text it's an actual person discussing with them uh, what this new feature is uh, so this is very similar to um, a product demo or even an FAQ where you can start to present how that feature works and then answer any questions you think that they might have about it and, uh, and communicate that out in, in an easy to consume way. Um, so you can do that in a pre-recorded method or even do a live stream. Um, so the, the live stream has the advantage of a little more urgency behind it. So it's not something that you can just get to when you happen to open that email. It's, you know, at this date and time we're announcing X. Uh, They can choose different formats and do whatever makes the most sense. So those are eight ways that you can use video at the bottom of the funnel. Uh, but you know, just using it is one thing. Uh, the next step is being able to track exactly how it works uh, and prove that you are you're actually getting ROI out of that investment. Uh, so the, the way to do that is with a video intelligence platform. Uh, so just some quick background on, on kind of the mechanics behind uh, the next three things I'm going to talk about. Um, with a, a video intelligence platform, what you're doing is you're not just pushing videos out, but you're actually tracking the individual people that are watching those videos and how much they're watching. 
Um, so you can see, you know, they start the video and then they watch 10 seconds and they jump forward 30 seconds of the video or do they watch certain sections multiple times. So you get a, a really granular view of, of how people are consuming the video. And then from there, you can take that information and pass it on to other systems. So it could be your market automation platform, uh, your CRM, uh, things like that. So you can start to share that, that engagement data for your individual prospects across all your different platforms. Uh, so the next few things I'm going to talk about are how do you use that data to actually prove the ROI of your investment? So the first one uh, is, is at the content level. So how do you look at an individual individual video you've you've created and figure out if it's working or not? Uh, so typically, how people do this is to look at the view count. Uh, but that's really a kind of a flawed method of of doing that because it doesn't really show how many people consumed the video. They just it just tells you how many people started the video. Uh, and what we found is that there's typically a very, very steep drop off in the first 10 seconds of a video, uh, oftentimes down to about 20%. So if you have a video that shows you someone's watch, or 100 people have watched that video, realistically only about 20 people have consumed the entire message or a good portion of it. Uh, and this is always something that our customers are, are kind of blown away by. Uh, they've, they've got these wonderful videos that are, are out there and getting tons of views, but when they start to track it through our platform, they have a little bit of harsh reality thrown at them that the videos aren't quite as good as, as they thought they were. Uh, but the great thing here is that you can adjust. So looking at the, the graph on the right, what this shows is aggregate attention span across the duration of a particular video. So on the left, uh, we've got um, you know, zero seconds of that video, so where it starts, and we can see obviously 100% of people uh, that have watched that video have started the video. And then throughout the duration of that video, uh, it'll it'll decline until um, some point at the end where you have you know maybe 20% of people left over or what have you. Uh, and the, the way that curve typically looks like is, is you'll see a steep drop at the front, and then it'll sort of plateau, and then a little dip at the end as people are sensing the video is coming to a close, they'll stop watching it. Um, so the great thing about this is that once you know how that video is performing, um, you can start to to look at pieces of the video. So that first 10 seconds, five, 10 seconds is extremely important because that's going to determine how many people are going to kind of plateau and watch the rest of the video. Um, so it can show you how, how effective you are at doing that and grabbing that attention right out of the gate. So if that drop is really steep, you know, you need to fix that first few seconds to, to really engage people up front. Um, so, so many videos out there start with the company logo. Uh, which is of no interest to anybody because if you're watching the video, you probably already know the company that made it. Um, so it, it kind of pushes people away right from the start. Uh, but if you start a video with, with action or something funny right out of the gate to get their attention, um, you'll see that decline. Uh, so this is a good mechanism to show you if you need to change that or not. Um, some other things that might happen throughout the video is you have a, you know, have a plateau. Um, you may see a drop at some point in the middle. Uh, and if that happens, you know that that piece of the video is very dry. People are not digging it, and you need to to you know pull out that part or present it in a different way that continues to engage people, so you don't get a drop. Uh, or the the opposite can happen. You'll actually see an increase in the number of people watching a certain section of the video, uh, which is a great thing because you can see that people are going back and rewatching that section. Um, and then you can dig into what are you presenting there? Uh, why are people so interested in that? Can we replicate that? Um, or you know, or it might be something bad. Maybe there was a mistake made, and people are like, "Wait, did I hear that right?" Um, so you can you can start to look at those uh, those dips and those spikes and figure out why uh, they're occurring and and what can you can what you can do to make the video better. And the nice thing is that if you were to modify your video uh, with video intelligence platform, you can upload that video over top of the existing one, and then wherever it's been shared across the internet. Um, it will update in those different places, so it makes it much easier to push out changes and then um, can constantly be updating and, and optimizing that video so that by the end you can have the, the highest level of, of engagement. So typically we recommend that people target uh, about 60% of people uh, watching by the end of the video. Uh, so it, it may not start that way, but over time you can enhance that video. And um, as you do more and more videos, you'll start to learn a little bit about how your audience likes to consume and what they what their likes and dislikes are, and you can start to, to make better videos. So the second of the three ways uh, to use the uh, the video analytics um, to, to prove ROI and, and make things more effective is when you're qualifying leads. So you've got all this really deep insight into 
what people are watching and from that you can deduce what their interests are. So what videos are they watching 10 seconds of and then not watching anymore? Which ones are they watching to the end or two or three times? Um, so you can really start to, to look at the different topics that they're consuming and get a better idea of, of what their, their interests are. Uh, so that can come at, at different places um, throughout the entire funnel. So at the bottom of the funnel, uh, where we're focusing today as a sales rep following up on a lead uh, before you even make a call if you can determine which features of your product someone's interested in versus which ones they don't care about because you're not watching that content uh, that can help frame that call before you even dial the phone um, so you know that they're interested in features a and b but not c and d so right out of the gate you can come swinging around around uh, the benefits of features a and b and they're going to be much more receptive to that uh, you can also get an idea of how engaged people are by how much time they've watched. So a prospect that's watched one three-minute video is probably not as interested as somebody who's watched three videos in, in a webinar or something like that. Uh, so it really gives the, the sales rep um, some, some great insight into who they're calling and what they're interested in uh, so they can um, really target their message right from the start. Looking further up the funnel uh, before a prospect even get to that point, uh, there's some really cool things you can do with that data, like lead scoring. Um, so um, identifying the people who are watching the most video, giving them the highest scores, and then passing them through. Um, and not even just how much video they consume, but which videos are they watching. So the lower funnel videos give them a higher score versus top of funnel. If they watch you know, 30 seconds of a 10-minute video, we'll give them five points for, for tuning in. But if they watch 80% or more of that, that video, we'll give them 50 points or whatever it might be. Uh, so you can get really flexible around using video as a way to score your leads and get them to sales faster or slower, depending on what they're engaging with and, and how they're engaging with it. Um, some other cool things you can do is uh, segmentation. So if you're starting to, if you're going to run a webinar on a certain feature, let's get all the people who have watched videos about that feature in the past, and you know we can announce how we've enhanced it or something like that. It's really powerful there. And then automated triggers is another great one. So somebody watches a video on your homepage. Um, let's send them a, a quick message in an email just to say, hey, thanks for watching. Here's another piece of content that goes a little bit deeper that you might be interested in. Um, or if they go and watch your, your pricing video, you know, they're fairly low funnel, um, maybe send them um, an invite to a, a product demo or something like that. Uh, and do that in an automated way so you can do that scale without having people to, to sit there and click the button and make the phone call. Uh, so you can automate a lot of that stuff up front before the sales reps get involved. So it's, it's really a powerful thing. Um, once you start plugging that video engagement data into your marketing automation and your CRM system, uh, just a ton of stuff you can do to, to automate things and, and really zero in and, and deliver a personalized message to the right people at the right time. And the final one is just tying, tying all your investments into your actual revenue um, or pipeline or however you want to look at it. So we, we, we're talking about how that engagement data exists on the video side and then you can push that through uh, your CRM system. So the way it works there is that it's attached to a leader contact. Um, so as a sales rep, you can see, you know, here's my lead record I'm on. Here's a list of all the videos they've watched and what percentage they've watched and how many seconds and whatnot. Uh, and then that will follow that leader contact through right until you, you close that deal. So at the end of the day, you have a, an opportunity that's been won. There's a certain amount of, of money attached to that. And you can look at all the videos that all the people have watched that are involved in that opportunity and then start to analyze that. So uh, probably two two easy ways uh, and, and really big, big ways you can, can do that. One is to look at um, a particular video and say how much revenue has this individual video uh, influenced. So maybe it's your homepage video of the people, you know, all the de deals we closed, how many people watch that, that homepage video or that product demo or my pricing video or things like that. And you start to, to build a picture around uh, which videos are are influencing uh, positive outcomes in terms of, of one customers and one revenue. Um, and that can go both ways. Maybe you've got a bad video out there that's scaring people away. So now you can look at all your lost deals and see if there's a, a video there. Uh, but most often it's, it's which videos are pushing people through the funnel. Uh, and we look at, at Video, we look at this on a, a monthly basis um, to see if there's any changes. Usually it's, it's pretty consistent. Uh, but what we found is we have these tour videos on our website. Um, so there's six videos that walk you through at a high level uh, different um, benefits of the platform and, and different use cases and, and then ends in a uh, discussion on pricing. And, and those six videos are 
every single month in the top 10 uh, videos watched by people who have uh, become customers. So we know that those videos are, are high performers, they're communicating the message properly. Um, so then we can go and just make sure that they're being promoted uh, as much as we can to people that are in cycle and, and people that are just new to the platform. Uh, but we know they're gonna convince people to, to at least carry on their journey. Uh, but without that intelligence, we can just we put them out there and we hope they're working, but we never really know. But this way we, we can actually see. Um, the other way is to start to divide up um, the revenue that you're closing based on the different videos. So it's kind of based on the same principle, but not just saying how much revenue have we, we influenced, but what's the, the exact dollar amount that, that this particular video was responsible for. So if there was, you know, if you close a deal for $10,000 and there was two videos that somebody watched, you can say that each of those was responsible for $5,000 or whatever the model might be. There may be other signals you want to incorporate in it. Um, but regardless of what method you use, at the end of the day, you're able to get a dollar amount attached to each video that you produce. Uh, so if you go back to your boss and you want to do another video, um, you've got that as reference. The last video we did um, in this format on topic X uh, produced $1 million in revenue or influenced $1 million in revenue. Therefore, it costs us $2,000 to make another video it's a pretty good investment. <laughs> so uh, you can start to tease that as justification for future projects and then prove the success of past, past projects. Uh, and it, it's very easy to do because all of those mechanics are already in place um, once you start tracking it. So that is it um, in terms of, uh, of the actual, um, actual webinar. Uh, so I'd like to invite people to, to ask questions. Uh, so you can do that through um, through your UI. Uh, there's a questions tab where you can uh, you can chat and submit a question. So please feel free to do that. Um, and, and while we while we wait for some questions to come in, uh, I'll do some some quick Q and A or, or sorry FAQs on um, some stuff that people commonly ask us. Um, and we always get people asking about the uh, the cost of video. Um, what what does that initial investment look like? Um, so I'll talk a little bit about the different phases of that. Um, so video is not as expensive as it used to be. That's probably the main takeaway. Um, you know, it used to be that if you wanted to start getting into video, you wanted to build a studio, um, get all the, the equipment and the actors, and you, you know, you're looking at a hundred thousand dollars out of the gate just to, to do this thing. Uh, right now, you can probably be a, a high quality video marketer for two thousand um, bucks. All of us right now are probably in our pockets or on our desk beside us have, have a, a mobile phone with a high quality HD video recorder in it. Um, and you know, even simple things like that uh, allow you to start to, to build great videos at a fairly low cost. And I think the key thing is that when you, you build a video, it's not really about the quality. Um, people are probably not gonna shut your video off um, because it's not a $100,000 production. They will shut it off if they don't like the content. So as long as you keep your focus on just developing quality content and delivering a message that people want to hear uh, and information that they want to hear, uh, that's that's the key thing. Uh, whether it's video done on a budget or it's a big production uh, is going to make very little difference into the, to how people engage with that video. Um, now we do make the recommendation that if it's um, something that you're going to use long term, maybe it's worth a little higher investment. So your homepage video, um, you know, put some money into that because it's going to be viewed by a lot of people um, and you want to make it look good. Uh, but a campaign video uh, can be done quick and easy and be just as effective at, you know, a thousand bucks as if you invested 10 or 20,000 into it. Uh, so focus on the, the content, not necessarily the quality. Uh, and then that'll help you uh, fit into whatever budget that you have. Uh, so we just got our, our first question through here. Uh, what do you consider the optimal length a video should be at each stage of the funnel? Um, that, that uh, definitely changes throughout the funnel. Um, so at the top of the funnel, we recommend keeping it short and sweet. Uh, actually, at, at any stage, it's always best to keep it short and sweet uh, as short as possible. Uh, but at the top of the funnel, it, it's really critical to do that because people, they're not really invested in you yet. Um, they're just looking for high level information and, and, and really looking just for the direction that they should go for in the future. Um, so you keep things entertaining up there. Um, get their attention um, and then just help prove to them that they're on the right path by doing more research with you. So it's really opening the door and, and welcoming, welcoming them in uh, and do it in a quick way. Down at the bottom of the funnel, um, 
again, you always want to keep people keep things short as possible, um, just to make sure you're not wasting people's time. Um, but because you're trying to communicate a much more detailed piece of information, um, it's okay to go longer. Uh, so you obviously can't do a product demo in 30 seconds. Um, you know, it maybe it takes five minutes to, to really go through a feature in detail. That's okay. A webinar, you know, 45 minutes, for example, that's fine because that's what people are expecting and you are communicating a, a lot of a lot of information. Um, so it's okay to go a little bit longer at the bottom of the funnel. Um, typically, 45 minutes is probably about the max I would go on anything, um, you know, even in a webinar or something like that. Um, but the shorter, the better. Uh, so I have a couple more questions here. Uh, so on which equipment are buyers looking at video, uh, PC, phone, tablet, uh, does it matter in the video plan? Uh, absolutely. Um, so, you know, you want to know how your prospects or your, your audience are consuming whatever content you're putting out. Um, and this goes beyond video, really. It's, it's just how do you communicate with people in general. But in the context of video, um, with a video intelligence platform, you can look at not only what device people are, are watching your video on, but actually what operating system. So you can get pretty granular, um, which can be important. Um, so are they, are you communicating with a market that's using Internet Explorer 1? Um, <laughs> probably not because it's not around, but um, there may be certain things you need to take into account if they're using older browsers. Um, you can't get as fancy with things. Uh, or you know, or is everybody watching it on a mobile device? And if so, is it a tablet versus a phone? And what what's the screen size and things like that? Um, so definitely uh, start to look at how people are consuming your video, and then um, offer it in, in in a way that's going to be suitable to them. Um, so you know, if it's a if they're all watching on mobile devices on on phones, you know, don't have tiny little text in your video; they won't be able to view it. If they're watching it on desktop, that's probably okay. If it's a mobile phone, maybe you need to keep it shorter versus a desktop. They're probably more invested. Maybe you can go longer. Um, so there's a lot of insight you can get from that. And then definitely make sure that you incorporate it into, into your plan. Um, I should get one question here about 45 minutes sounds very long for a video. Uh, did you mean seconds? Uh, no, definitely mean, um, mean minutes. Um, 45 minutes in the context of something like a webinar. So for example, this webinar will be available as a, a recorded video that you can go back after. Um, I wouldn't have a 45 minute homepage video necessarily, uh, but you do have a lot of flexibility in terms of, of what you're delivering. So, you know, a video doesn't just mean a, a two minute clip. Um, it can come in the form of recorded webinars. Maybe it's a, a trade show or a conference you did and you recorded someone's speaking session uh, and you're offering that video. Um, those are okay to go longer with. Uh, but a video on your homepage or something like that might you, you should keep it as short as possible, uh, you know, even down to 30 seconds if you can. Uh, so definitely a, a lot of variation there. Um, I'm going to try to get to a couple more questions before we run out of time. As a branch, all of your videos have a consistent intro and outro. Um, yes and no. Um, I would argue personally that I would think the outro is probably more important. Um, the intro I would say it's probably better not to use any consistency on um, maybe in the feel of the video and certain elements of it, it's okay to be consistent. Um, but because the first five, 10 seconds is so important in terms of engaging people, uh, if you have the same intro on every video, it's going to, you're going to lose people because they've already seen it 10 times. Um, you've, you've lost your opportunity to, to grab their attention from the gate. Uh, so that piece of it, I would, I would keep very flexible to, to whatever the content of the video is and, and making sure it works there. Uh, but the outro there, it's nice to have um, maybe your logo or whatever it might be, um, just to, to, to add that consistency of, of your brand. Um, all right. All right, so I have another question here. Uh, I might have missed this part um, due to the interruption. I saw most of your discussion about the importance of tracking uh, and how analytics about video uh, uptake, um, besides simple video count, but how, uh, what tools can we use? Um, so there's a number of tools in the market today that, that weren't available you know, five years ago when really your only option was something like, like YouTube. Uh, that'll tell you the view count, uh, but not go into any more detail on that. Uh, so today there's uh, video intelligence platforms uh, like Vidyard. 
So these are tools that allow you to host and distribute your videos through. Um, so you can upload your video into the, the video platform mm -hmm. and then push it out into, you know, embed it on your website, um, use it in email campaigns, um, share it through social, what have you. Uh, and, and the key difference here, you know, you can do that with YouTube too, but the key difference is that a video intelligence platform like Vidyard will allow you to track the individual people that are watching the video and how much they're watching of it. Um, so that's where that analytics piece comes into into play. Um, so the platform automatically tracks all that stuff for you, and then there's integrations you can use to push it into the other platforms and, and what have you. Uh, so the, the key to that is just that the video analytic or video intelligence platform is the the tool that you're going to use to to get that. Um, and there's all kinds of other things that you can do. Um, like there's video management makes that whole piece of it easier. So as your library grows, you can um, manage it properly. Uh, integration with YouTube, so you don't have to you know, upload your video to multiple places, you can upload it to uh, just to, your, to Vidyard and then push it out to all these different places. So it just makes your whole video experience, um, you know, it's all tied into one platform and, and a lot of these things are automated in, in, in the background, like the tracking and whatnot. Uh, so it gives you a, a ton of power um, through one platform, um, just to enable video across all the campaigns. So I think that is it for uh, the questions we have today. Um, again, we're going to put uh, in the attachments here uh, and in the follow-up email, we'll have a link to uh, some additional assets and, and examples of videos that, that fit into those eight different uh, types that we talked about specific for the bottom of the funnel. Uh, so you can take a look at those. Um, otherwise, if you have any questions, you can uh, uh, contact Vidyard, Vidyard at vbot at vidyard.com. So vbot is in video robot. Uh, he's our, our very popular mascot. Um, or visit our website and our blog at, at vidyard.com slash blog. And there's hundreds and hundreds of posts on, on a lot of the stuff we talked about today and then additional things uh, around video marketing. So uh, I want to thank everybody for joining us today. And uh, we really appreciate your time. Have a great day.